Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Obble Dude. Today, I wanted to come to this land area here and kind of just do a good old-fashioned mining run and kind of just talk a little bit about mining in Entropia Universe, what I do when I mine, how I try to kind of sustain my balance or bankroll overall. Um, because there's some things that I do, or at least that I try to do, um, that way I'm not constantly having to deposit. Like, I'm a depositor, but at some point my goal is to no longer become a depositor and be able to essentially either use my net worth to do the things I want to do in-game, or if there's something like crazy expensive I want to do and I got the fun, sure, I would maybe depot or something if it made sense. But my overall goal is to basically stop depoting, and that's why my main goals and my main things that I go for is mainly mining and or hunting for markup. Now I rather mine for markup versus hunting just because with hunting you, there's kind of a little more fluff with it um, and it's kind of harder to pinpoint the exact things that you're going for versus mining. Um, and with mining too you can find kind of more stuff with somewhat a decent amount of markup nothing crazy but like overall combined um, it'll it kind of all adds up so when I come out here I'm running the f106 mainly now when it comes to mining I do like running unlimited equipment um, I do know at some point um, as far as my levels go I probably will not be doing unlimited as much possibly I'm not sure it all depends on how things go from here but one thing I like about using unlimited equipment is simply you don't have to pay for markup every time and two um, you can kinda focus more on that one piece of equipment and try to either tear it up upgrade it and you can kinda make it more powerful um, and then it becomes more of a personal thing in a way. Um, it's kind of like this is my main miner or whatever. But at some point, I'm probably going to have to go limited again at some point, possibly. But one main thing I'm trying to do in Entropia as well is maintain my balance as much as possible so I don't have to deposit more than I should or more than I need to. Which is why A, I try to go for markup. B, I try to find good areas that I can be consistent in. This is actually a pretty good area. The only thing is, um, well actually it's kind of two things. For one, it's really hard to come here before someone else has already mined here. So a lot of times you might get a lot of misses because someone's already mined some stuff. But when it comes to sustaining my balance or trying to sustain the balance in the bankroll, one thing I do is I go for markup. And two, I go for um, using equipment lower than my level, but still being good somewhat. Um, like, for example, I could run right now probably the Terra Master 4, barely the Terra Master 5, um, and, you know, I could have some success with it. However, the chances of me not having success with it are just as high and higher than what I'm doing right now. Because my main thing isn't really to go for globals or to get huge hits, although it can happen depending on if you have bad runs and things like that. But I try to mine and hunt below my level and a lot of times well below my level. That way I can try to get the max efficiency out of it. I can go and get that um, high markup stuff and all at the same time getting skills and um, tearing up or upgrading equipment as needed um, if they're unlimited mainly. Um, I go for limited upgrading and tearing too but it's just like it's so tough to like max it out before it's all gone so I don't focus on it nearly as much but I'll use it like when I'm I have the opportunity but my basic strategy for trying to maintain my balance is just using lower level equipment or equipment that I'm way too maxed out on which is kinda how Entropia works um, in the first place like that's kinda the big difference I would say with Entropia and other traditional MMOs is that like you don't want to be hunting or mining 
exactly at your level. You want to be like a, possibly as low as you can and have it still kind of be worth it. Um, like the F-106 or even using the F-105. Um, and also some various weapons too, depending on level. Um, like me personally, I don't like using the LR-15 just because I'm still on a learning period. And I try to get out of the learning period before I start using something. That way I can try to get the most efficiency out of it to try to maintain the bankroll and the balance as much as possible. Because the idea is, for me at least, is to just be able to keep playing without having to deposit an arm and a leg um, consistently in order to do it because I keep losing and all that. Now I will say here, we're not doing good at all because I think someone already came through here and mined all this out um, because this is a really popular land area. I like coming here, but I'm about, I think this might be my last run on this land area just because with how many people come here, I mean, it's tough. I mean, I might come, I, I might try and come here, like, maybe if I have time early in the morning. Like, if it's 6 a.m., I might attempt to come here, or if it's earlier, or even late at night, like 1 or 2 a.m., might make more sense to come here. Um, but I think these, it might be one of my last runs here, just because the hits are good, and the stuff you can get here is good. Everything about it's good. It's just too popular. And that's kind of the only downside with mining is that you can't really mine around people. Now, when it comes to hunting, I will say it's kind of the same thing, but a little different. Um, with hunting, my theory kind of is, and it's kind of the same with mining too, actually. Um, but I feel like my hunting levels might be a little better in some instances because I feel like I do way lower level hunting. But, um, like if you're hunting around people, I feel like you can get stuff as long as you're not like the least efficient hunting in that same area, if that makes sense. So like hunting can be a little bit better hunting with people or around people, I guess I should say not so much with, but just around them. Um, but you can still kind of see those, um, not so good hits if there's too many people around either way. So I think for that reason, this might be one of my last runs. Um, if I'm playing in the, like at one or 2 AM, I might come back here cause it might be worth coming here. Um, but that, and that's another part of my strategy too. You know, if I can't be consistent somewhere, then I'm just going to move on and go somewhere where I can be consistent or find a place where I can be consistent. And really the only way to do that is A, through research, which still the information is pretty minimal out there. But the main thing I have to do is just go to different places and just try it out, see what, ha see what happens. That's kind of all you can really do is just test things out and kind of run back tests and see if a place could be good or could not be. Um, but like I said... Based on what I've been seeing, this place is good. It's just a lot of people come here, so it's really hard to to find stuff. And another thing I try to do when I'm trying to be somewhat consistent, which I'm going to start doing right now because we haven't really been hitting, is um, I'll try to switch up my mining patterns. So, like, one thing I'll do is, like, if what I've been doing, which first I'll try to kind of go around the perimeter of the land area because a lot of times... Um, you can find some good stuff if you just kind of hug the perimeter of the land area. And when that doesn't work, then I'll kind of do diagonals back and forth um, from one end of the land area to the other. So like what I'll do is I'll kind of like go diagonal up and then I'll kind of come back down and kind of try to try to go over as much of the area as I can. Um, in order to not miss anything and possibly not lose a bunch because right now we have lost I don't know how much we've lost but we've missed a solid five plus drops um, which is kind of un, which isn't as typical for me um, usually I don't go that long without getting a hit in a, in a lot of my other places that I go um, but another thing that kind of helps me try to be consistent and maintain my balance in Entropia so I don't go fully broke 
is I'll kind of know when to call things. So like if a run's not really working out or it seems like it's going a certain way like this one is, I'll call it out early. I might go to another land area. Check that out. You can kind of get a feel for an area after a little bit um, and kind of just learning when to know to call it, which kind of takes just play time. Um, but being able to kind of mitigate your runs or call your runs can even help. Um, there have been times where I've done a 50 ped run and I'm almost at break even and then I go into a 100 ped run and now I'm down like 10 ped. But also the opposite has happened where I was down maybe 10 ped from a 50 ped run and then I did another 50 ped and now I'm almost at break even at close to 95 plus ped. Um, so either way, it kind of all adds up to the same in the end, so that doesn't really matter as much. It's kind of just being able to stomp if you need to, if you're just like being dumb. You know, like if you're just randomly flying around and like just landing places and hoping for the best and kind of like praying, I feel like you kind of need to take a step back at that point and kind of reassess. Um, because... I don't want to say getting emotional, but kind of getting emotional and then kind of just saying F it and then kind of just seeing what happens and hoping for the best that usually is what will end you going down a hole that you don't want to go down. Um, because usually it's never good and usually it's kind of the same results at a casino or a slot machine or a blackjack table where next thing you know, you know, you've been hoping for the best the whole time, but it just never came through, and now you're pretty much out of funds, and then you reassess then, and then you're like, oh, I should have done it like this, and now your funds are lower, or even gone, um, when you could have just taken that step back and reassessed um, before you got too deep, if that makes sense. Um, that's one thing, at the beginning at least, that it helped me a lot. Um, now it's kind of easier because I can kind of call my runs when I'm like, okay, I'm, th this is good enough. Uh, I'm done either losing or I'm probably not going to get too much more. So then I'm able to kind of make a call there too. And frequency of drops are also really important. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've seen a decent amount of videos and streams, and there's videos that I've seen in live streams too of people mining in Entropia and they are just overlapping like crazy now you don't want too much space in between your drops but you don't want to be overlapping too much either that's why I try to kind of guesstimate 70 meters and that's why in a lot of my mining videos I talk about the 70 meter um, dropping because that's the best way to not overlap, but get close enough to almost finding everything or not missing anything. Um, and, to, and that can create a lot more consistency doing it that way. Now, when a lot of the stuff's already been mined out, it's kind of hard to do that. And when things like this happen, I'll try to go a little further out, like 100 meters, um, just to give me a better chance um, cause if it's hitting like every time you're dropping, yeah, keep doing that same distance. But if you're not, you don't, you want to stretch it out. You don't want to, um, condense your drops anymore. And another thing too, that I do when I'm mining to try to keep costs low is when I repair or when I need to repair, like the extractor or the finder, I usually won't repair it to full TT. Um, I've found that with the slow decay of both my extractor and the F-106 and the F-105, um, if you do like 20-25 ped each time for repairs, I haven't noticed any kind of efficiency loss, and that 25 ped usually will last a good while for both the extractor and the finder. Um, so you'll be spending a lot less, a lot less frequently um, just putting PED or a small amount of PED into your repairs versus fully repairing. 
Now, I know when it comes to some things like armor, you definitely want to fully repair. But I feel like with mining, at least, I don't think you really need to do that. You can just spend a little bit, and it'll last you a good while. And that'll keep your costs low and can kind of help with overall profits. And then that way, too, you're not spending over 100 ped, potentially, um, each time in repairs. Even though that would last you a really long time. Um, but doing it that way kind of just allows you to have a little extra ped, um, for drops instead of repairs. So when it comes to mining and trying not to break the bank, because, I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff. I mean, I've seen level 30s breaking out the Terramaster 5 and running like 300, no, 3000 ped per run. And then it's gone so fast, and, and they're just constantly down so much. And, I mean, I feel like this game is just meant to be played below your level. I think that's the bottom line. Like, for me personally, I probably wouldn't even touch the Terra Master 5, even though I could technically use it. I probably wouldn't even touch it for me personally until I'm at least level 30, if not 40, probably closer to 40, honestly. Um just to try to have the most potential efficiency um like with, with the f106 i'm pretty sure that's like level three and i'm at like 22 uh overall 20 minor prospecting and surveyor about 22 um so it's like i'm playing way below my level but we're still getting like decent hits and we can easily global um the only reason why we don't global very often is because I do play for markup and for consistency. And for example, if I'm spending 95 ped on a run and I come back with anywhere between 92 and 95 ped, I'm not going to get a global. Because, I mean, if I did, that would be pretty insane and probably really rare to happen. Um, just because I feel like the global system is mainly to kind of recoup um, your losses in a way. Um, and I feel like that's where kind of the gambling factor comes in, is when you're chasing those globals, hoffs, etc. Like, anytime I don't see swirls or a global, I feel like I'm kind of doing something right in a way. Because that means I'm probably overall broken even, if not in profit. Dude, ample. Let's go. That was a good hit. That was a good hit. If it, if if that was a double drop, I would have dropped again. But it's not going to be worth it. Alright, I think we just made up the run on this hit. I think. If it's 20 ped, I think we made up the losses on this run. I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay, I don't even know where I was because I'm kind of like whenever I see something that's not a small, that's bigger than a small, I get excited because I don't see those very often either. Um, but since we were kind of down on this run, okay, so yeah, 10 pet, I think, if I'm accurate. Let's see here. Oh, wow. Okay, well, overall 18. It could have been 10 or 12. But now we have overall 18. But that does help still, though. It still does help a lot. Um, oops. Now we're RP walking. We don't want that. Um, so we got about eight drops left here. So I kind of want to start wrapping this up a little bit. And then we'll see what we got. We're pretty heavy. I do know we have a good amount of stuff um, in our hunting tab, too. So that might be part of it. Um, but mainly you kind of just want to hunt or mine well below your level as much as you want to spend me personally i like hunting the way that i do as low level as i do and mine the way i do here because i can keep costs low and i can get back a good amount um either way hunting's a little more work a little more time consuming which you'll see that in the next video um but Basically, hunt and mine below your level, specifically mining, we're talking about mainly in this, but this really goes for any of the professions. You know, hunt and mine way below your level, 
but use good stuff. Um, go to places and mine places that you know you can get good stuff, where you can be consistent, get that mark up, and the same goes for really anything. And if you're not in a good spot or it's not a good day, um, just know when to cut your runs and cut your losses. That way you can take some of that ped that you have left over that you didn't lose um, and then you can use it for another run that could be more profitable. Um, and especially if you do have kind of that loss under your belt and you somehow get a global, well then that can make up almost a free run right there. I mean, I have had a few instances in the past, not so much recently, but in the past where I'd be down a little bit and I was a little concerned about it. And then I'd go out and do a 70 ped run, mine, mining specifically, and I would get a 60, 70 ped global. Pretty much the whole run is now paid for and the rest of those drops end up being free money. Now, when it comes to those situations, what I do is if I hit a 70 ped global like that, I'm going to take that ped, I'm going to get pretty much that whole return back for that run. And what I personally do is I'll either A, completely leave that land area or that area that I got the global, and I'll go somewhere completely different, or what I typically do, and this is usually my go-to, is I'll leave the land area, I'll stop the run completely, I won't go anywhere else, and I'll wait a day or two and kind of let things kind of settle down. That way, in a couple days, when I go to do another mining run, maybe somewhere completely different than where I got that global, because I'll try to wait as long as I can before returning somewhere, or the exact area where I got it. Um, just to avoid wasting money. So what I'll then do is I'll just go somewhere completely different. And then if I get close to break even on that run, then I know I've made profit. Um, because I pretty much recouped that entire run in the last run. And now this is pretty much a free run of all profit. And that's happened quite a few times. Ooh, I accidentally dropped when I did not want to drop. So there's a lot to it, there's a lot of strategies, um, there's a lot of things to think about specifically with mining, um, but the last thing you want to do, unless you got the money to burn and you want to hit the biggest global or haw if you can, that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're working with minimal funds or if you feel like you need to put in hundreds of dollars at a time for a run, I'm telling you. You don't need to. You can actually sustain yourself kind of better if you take that same 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 ped and do a way lower level run. Like, yeah, I'm not saying grab a TT finder and go mine with that at level 30 or 40. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is use equipment that doesn't require a whole lot of skills to use that is still good, like the F-105, F-106. Um, as far as guns and hunting go, I'm not 100% sure. But as far as mining goes, if you're at 20 and you're using the F-105, F-106, you're already in a good spot. Now, if you're, I don't know, maybe level 50, it, it depends. You know, if you're using the F-106 at 50 and it's tier 10 and you're using all depth enhancers and you're at like close to a thousand depth, I say run that all day. I mean, that's super efficient, I would say. But if you want to try to go for some bigger stuff, you can use the bigger equipment. The only problem with the bigger equipment is unless you have ridiculous amounts of skills, it's really not worth using. Um, like, yeah, if you have pretty much all of your mining skills that you need, 70, 80 plus, and you're using a Terra Master 5 or 6, that's completely fine, I would say. Completely fine. Um, just because you're way above that level still. Um, it, it's just when you're at a lower level, it's kind of harder to do that, so you got to kind of find a way. But with mining, it's a lot easier. So, I think we did really well this run. We went from being so, like, it being such a bad run and being so low 
to now, I think we're probably broken even. Oh, and uh, I forgot to mention, which I used to always do in my videos, and now I never do it. But we came out here with 51 ped. So we're going to see where we're at as far as the ped. Now, the fact that we're very heavy, I think that's good. However, we do have a good amount of stuff in the hunting tab, but I still only think it's only 20 pet. So it shouldn't matter too much. So uh, the fact that we're kind of heavy should be a good sign. Um, and yeah, sometimes, you know, <clears throat> it might not go as good, kind of like what happened here. But then it can start picking up fairly quickly as long as you know you kind of follow all those different strategies of not dropping as close as you normally would spacing out your drops that way you can find the areas where the decent stuff is and I do want to make another mining video showing another mining strategy that I'll do um, it just depends on how much we find and if we get into those situations like using one of my other strategies for example when I got that decent ample hit, I should have dropped again to see if there was anything else. Like, dropped in the area, essentially, um, to see if that was a good area that hasn't been mined out yet. But sometimes I don't like doing that, because you can lose a good amount of ped doing that. See, like here, part of my other strategy would be, eh, try to double drop and see if we can get something else. And see if we miss something. So then I'll go instead of 70, I'll go about 50. That way I'm overlapping, but I'm not overlapping too much. That way I can find things outside of the area that I just searched in, but still look for the stuff inside the area as well, which I had a feeling that was going to happen. Um, but that's the run. We kind of spent a little more now. Now we spent closer to like 52, maybe 53 ped, just because I did that extra drop for no reason. So. Um, I think I'll call it at 53 at this point because of that extra unintended drop, but I kind of wanted to see. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of some hunting strats. That's basically all the things I think about um, when I decide where I'm going to mine and what, while I'm mining and all that. So I wanted to just do a good old-fashioned mining run, talk a little bit about mining, because mining is my favorite profession. It is not my number one profession that I do, um, although I am trying to focus more on hunting as well, because I think hunting can pair well with mining as well. All right, now let's take a look and see what we got out of this run. So we started with... 53 we're gonna say technically it was 51 but because I did that extra drop I'm thinking it's probably closer to 52 50 but we'll just call it 53 just for argument's sake and to try to be a little con conservative yeah we do have a good amount of stuff in here though I forgot to put away my um, stuff from harvesting oh yeah this can get out of there wow we did not find a good array of items um, so 46 so we probably lost roughly, I would say, 7 or 8 ped on this run. Um, that ample did help us get it back. I'm not sure what Gaganite goes for, but we didn't really find any of the stuff we were really going for, unfortunately. And that's another thing, too. If you're going for a specific resource and you're consistently not getting it at an area, even though it should be there, um, a lot of times you might just have to try to find a better area where you can find that specific item. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I mean, I have found a decent amount of Deruleum and other stuff here. Um, so it's like I hate to not come back here, but it's just, it's hard to get here before someone else is mined here. This tower is still here. I think this is the same tower. <clears throat> this 1300 ped tower has been here, I swear, for three weeks now. I swear. It's been three weeks, and this thing is still here. They do not want to get mining out. I would take that so fast. Like, I would take that so fast. 
This tower's been here forever, dude. But that's what I'm saying, though. There's tower potential here. That's why I want to keep coming here. But it's, like, it's tough. Because, like, so many... It's so competitive. That That's the thing. I mean, I know if I came here at 2 or 3 in the morning, which I might do. I might make a video at, like, 2 or 3 in the morning over the weekend. And we might see if we can get a decent run like a crazy run maybe even um this is a place where amping up and amping up smart might be profitable now a little thing i do want to say real quick and then we're we'll end this video i've done a few runs where i've amped up stupidly and just been dumb with it I kind of want to do a video on amps and how to be kind of smart with amps and a little more efficient with amps, or at least the way I look at amps. It might not be 100% accurate as far as the reality, um, but this is just the way I think of it, to try to basically do the same thing I always do when I'm mining, being consistent, getting those you know average hits um, to try to just break even. I want to show you guys the same concept I have with amps and doing the same thing but with amps so you're sp so technically you're doing the same thing but you're just spending more to then try to get more back quicker I guess um, so like if you wanted to break even at 200 ped quicker versus 100 ped using amps that could be one thing I don't do it often and I don't really see a huge need to do it but I will say when it comes to more advanced land areas, when it comes to mining, and even more advanced planets when it comes to mining, especially FOMA specifically, um, there are some situations where not amping up just also doesn't make sense. But I feel like that's more far and few in between um, than instances of it making more sense to not amp up. Um, but anyway, guys, that's the video. That's kind of the end of my rant and talk um so guys if you like the video hit the thumbs up button below the video hit the like button and um if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet subscribe to the channel because we got more entropia videos coming out and we also have some videos coming out that are not entropia but i think you guys will end up liking them pretty good as well um the channel is about to kind of go through a surge um, of videos. Um, I've been on the grind trying to get many, many videos recorded, both Entropia, so I can maintain the three Entropia videos at least that I promised you guys a week, and I got some other videos that aren't Entropia that I'm currently working on. I'm trying to finish those up and get those out, and uh, I want to be more consistent with those games as well. Um, so, anyways, guys, that's the video. Like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.